Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of August 20th, 2017. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What a big week it is. Now, I know I say that every week. I know, but it really is a really big week. The whole world is a buzz about the eclipse. There's a very powerful solar eclipse set to take place this week, early this week. And it is a powerful representation to us all. Now think about what happens during an eclipse. We have the light, right? We have the sun. The sun is always there. Even if it's covered by clouds, we know that the sun is going to be there day in and day out. But what happens for a brief moment is this regular old light that we've been accustomed to that we haven't always been looking at is covered by a shadow. And we have to address the shadow. We have to confront the shadow in order to fully celebrate and illuminate the light in a brand new way. And that's exactly what we're seeing happen right now, right? Culturally, we've got lots of examples of that. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But I was also meditating on the idea that this is a Leo eclipse. This is an eclipse in the sign of Leo. And the sign of Leo has to do with ego. Now there are healthy ways of understanding ego and embracing and embodying ego. And there are unhealthy ways of doing that. Some of the unhealthy ways, the ancients going way back, early spiritual documents talk about the unhealthy ways that ego can show up. But let's talk about some of the healthy ways that ego can show up. Healthy ways that ego shows up is to really affirm to ourselves that we are worthy of getting out of bed, that we can get out of bed, we're worthy of taking a shower, of taking care of ourselves, of presenting ourselves to the world to the best of our ability today. That's what ego asks, that we show some semblance of worthiness. And the best of a healthy ego is to know that there is something within us, something honest, something true, that is worthy of shining and being seen, that is uniquely our own. I'll give you another example of healthy ego. I think of this as one example of healthy ego. When I was growing up, my mother, she used to tell me that if you are a good person, if you are a loving person, you can feel good about yourself. That's what she used to tell me. If you are a good person, if you're a loving person, you can be at home anywhere in the world, with any culture, with any religion. And when I embrace that, not only am I more at peace with myself, but it reminds me of these lessons of healthy ego. But of course there are unhealthy egos, right? And a lot of times the unhealthy ego is um, really coming from an expression of pain. When there's so much pain and we're not ready to look at it, right? We're lost in that shadow. We don't have the strength or the ability, which ultimately is the Leo energy. It is about being strong. It's about self-knowledge, but when we don't have that, we get lost in the shadow, we get lost in the pain, then we find unhealthy ways of expressing ego, of saying that we are better than other people. And so, of course, culturally, universally, we are seeing this all around the world right now. And all around the world right now, we are being asked to look at shadow and know that as much as we may be looking at shadow in some ways, we also right now are giving birth to an appreciation of light, of illumination, and of healthy ego in the process. I am very encouraged when I look at this eclipse, as much as I, like a lot of people out there, feel that sense of sadness, that sense of heartbreak, to see the pain being manifested, to see how the shadow is uh, really asking us to address it. We're really being asked to confront the shadow right now. As hard as that is, know that there is light coming up and I'm super excited about this. So this particular eclipse is speaking in supreme harmony with Uranus. That's the most powerful connection it's making. Uranus is a planet that represents freedom. It represents equality. It represents a lightness of being and a truth of oneself. It is embracing the uniqueness that is in all of us and recognizing that very light, whether you want to call it the light of love, which I like to call it love or wisdom, which I like to call it love and wisdom, whether you want to call it the divine. Some people like to call it God. However you understand that light, that light shines in all of us. And so the fact that Uranus is speaking in supreme harmony to this eclipse, I am so excited about that because it suggests to me that a part of 
understanding, this new illumination is going to be deeply connected to that appreciation of the love and wisdom that is within every single one of us. Even when we make it hard to see, even when we hide it behind a lot of pain. And at the same time, Saturn is standing still in the sky and gearing up to move forward before the week is out. This is very encouraging to me because it does suggest that the realizations and the changes that transpire now as a result of what this eclipse is symbolizing, the changes will last. They will have a lasting impact. And for some people out there and for some cultures out there, the impact will be lasting very likely for the rest of our lifetime. And I don't say that lightly. Now you add to this the fact that Mars is making harmonious connections to other power players in the sky. This says to me that we are empowered and we are getting to the root of self-knowledge and acting from that place. There is a lot of wisdom out there and there's a lot of love out there as well. And right now, a lot of us are getting caught up in the shadow but it is all leading to a much more illuminated place, a much more encouraging and empowered place at that. There are healthy ways to use our power, right? This is gonna help us to distinguish that. What is a healthy way? What is a truly effective way to use the agency we have, and especially in our own lives? And I'll tell you, whatever it is that you decide to do, however it is that you want to be a part of that light, that greater illumination, First of all, more power to you. But however it is that you decide to do that, do it from a place of peace within you. That's what I feel Mars right now is representing to us. Mars is, when you think about the glyph of Mars, it is a circle with an arrow coming out of it. And that is a circle of wholeness. It is a circle of completion. It is a circle that understands that to know yourself and to be complete within yourself and to be at peace within yourself and to act from that place makes your actions that much more precise and that much more effective. So we all are going to be encouraged to get in touch with that peace within us. Now you add this other layer on top of all this eclipse magic that is happening. You add this layer of Venus. So let's talk about Venus because Venus is going to be before the week is out moving into this part of the sky where the eclipse is taking place. And in the weeks ahead, we're gonna have some interesting things happen. It's not just about the eclipse right now, but in the weeks ahead, we're gonna have Mars and then stationary Mercury and Venus all meet the eclipse point. So I spoke a little bit about this last week. You may wanna check that out again when I talked about Mercury retrograde, but essentially what this means is what transpires now will not be limited to now, but there will be further empowerments, further love, further clarity, further realizations that are coming up in the weeks ahead. So September is set to be a very powerful month at that. But what Venus is doing before she changes signs, Venus is going to reach out to Uranus, and this is going to be a very interesting conversation. It's a conversation of tension. Astrologers call it a square. And it does suggest, especially on a personal level, some, you know, very surprising revelations. And in one kind of, you know, mundane kind of way, this can be understood as romantic surprises not going well. So if you have any kind of romantic surprises planned, I would be a little cautious of that. Any kind of large purchases planned, I would be cautious of that, especially if they're technology related. I would encourage you, especially especially in the early part of the week to try to avoid that. And especially if it's a splurge kind of item. But having said that, when I look at this, this really is a deepening uh, understanding of what it means to love your tribe, your country, your ethnicity. This is Venus in the sign of Cancer, speaking with Uranus. Again, Uranus is about the universal. Uranus is about humanitarianism and equality. So where is it that the two meet? Where is it that we can actually bring that understanding into what's happening on the home front? And the home front really is right where you are. The home front is your own home, however you understand it. The home within your own body and within your own skin. How are you bringing that sense of acceptance and recognizing that light and that love and wisdom within you, within yourself? 
Is it that you're expecting to have this peaceful world, but you don't have peace within yourself? Are you not accepting yourself exactly as you are with the body that you have, with whatever kind of shell that you're carrying? If there's any of that, if there's any of, you know, having discord in your own home, not being able to find peace within your family, then that is going to show up right now too i must admit because ultimately this is the work this is how we bring a more personal understanding to what's happening with us as a collective it truly is about not just acting from a place of peace but being in a place of peace that will make us most effective in the world so all of us in our own unique ways are going to get to challenge what it means to be where we are from and encouraged to elevate that understanding so that it acknowledges love and wisdom. Before the week is out, the sun also is going to move into the sign of Virgo. So happy birthday to all the Virgos out there. And the sun will meet Mercury in the sky, bringing further conversations, but also plans. What are the exact things we can do? What's a detailed plan that we can come up with to create positive change in our life, personally, but also collectively what are practical steps we can take right where we are in our smallest moments each and every day to affirm love and wisdom in the world that's exactly what we're going to be encouraged to do what i love about this week what i absolutely love about this week is that it's really exciting we are having an amazing eclipse take place and we are having an eclipse that so many people are excited about that's getting a lot of energy you know if there's one thing i've learned one thing i've seen again and again is that what gets the energy what gets all the energy really is where it is we end up going and this eclipse is a powerful one. It is getting a lot of energy collectively and it is encouraging all of us in our own ways to unleash our light. My hope for you, my hope for us as a collective and in your own individual journey is that you allow it to be a very bright light indeed, rooted in self-love and self-acceptance and knowing that it is ultimately a light of love and wisdom that shines in all of us. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful for it. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up. It means so much. You can get the week ahead video scope looking at how this eclipse is speaking to your sign, but also Venus. I spoke, I focused a lot on the eclipse and Venus for each and every sign uh, for the video scopes as part of Astro Fabulous Superstar. So you can log on to NadiaShaw.com or AstroFabulous.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars and superstars get exclusive expanded video scopes each and every week and so much more. I am so excited about September 1st. September 1st, I have all kinds of amazing things planned, special things planned. It is a Mercury retrograde, so we're working over time to try and make some of these things come together from a technological perspective, okay? And I'll give you a little bit of update on that next week. But suffice it to say, there are big bonuses, big, big discounts, big specials coming up that I'm very excited to tell you about. And I'll tell you a lot more about that next week. If you want to, you know, be part of that and get the coupon codes and things like that that you will need, you have to sign up to my newsletter. And you can sign up to my newsletter by going to NadiaShaw.com, scrolling down to the bottom and just signing up there and you're all set. Now, I also want to say that I will be in Vancouver very soon. I'm so excited about this. I'm doing two talks in Vancouver. Well, one talk and one workshop. So the talk is on um, from fate to free will a fast and furious history of astrology it's a two-hour talk and then there is a six-hour workshop that's going to take place and the workshop is called chemistrology and it's about the astrology of love and attraction and having that instant chemical reaction to someone you meet and that talk that i'll be doing in vancouver as part of the Fraser Valley Astrological Guild. That talk, actually, I did um, a webinar on that as part of Synchronicity University. It's over two hours long. I did a lesson on that, and you can download that at synchronicityuniversity.com. And just a little bit of a heads up, I will be in India at the end of January. I will be in Serbia in March, and I'm right now finalizing next year, 
Okay, so save the date, but next fall I will be in Los Angeles and I will be in San Diego. Oh, and in May I will be in Chicago. So there's lots of places to be uh, and I'm really, really excited about that. Before I let you go, I want to say, I know that there's a lot going out there in the world right now and I know that a lot of people, especially if you're a sensitive soul like me, uh, a lot of people, those sensitivities are, are really feeling it. You know, you're feeling the pain, you're feeling the sadness. Really, that's what pain is, is sadness that's afraid to look at itself manifests as pain. And it really becomes tragic when that pain creates more pain uh, in others. And we are seeing these examples across the board, across the world, across cultures, there is no culture that is immune to this understanding of um, sadness that is not willing to look at itself can become pain. So my absolute hope for this world right now and for all of us right now and in my full heart and with my full emotion, my absolute hope for us is that we have that bravery to be able to look at our own pain, to know that ultimately that is the path to love and wisdom. I believe that very strongly. If you are going to own how it is that love and wisdom speaks through you, it starts by moving through pain, acknowledging the sadness, and that sadness transforms and becomes great intuition, great sensitivity, and becomes a force of good in the world if only we will start to do the work so wherever it is that that work needs to happen for you my hope is that you have the bravery and the self-love to undertake that work and to be willing to look at that and i think that that is an incredible start to facing that shadow that will transform to great and brilliant and illuminated light that will be a very obvious and very abundant force of love and wisdom, a very obvious love and wisdom in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for like being so close to celebrating a very big 11 years as a full-time astrologer for me, but also ultimately really the reason that I do this. And sometimes I'm able to tap into that a little bit more clearly than others, but I always, in my humanness, I always try to do my best. Really, what I'm here to do is to affirm that the universe is wise and loving. And I hope that in some way that this video affirmed this sacred truth for you, that you are an expression of love and wisdom in the world. Regardless, I don't wanna get emotional, <laughs> but I really believe that no matter where you are in that process of moving through that, that pain and through that sadness, regardless of where you are in that, you are an expression of love and wisdom in the world. And I hope that this eclipse in some way reminds you of this sacred truth. The universe is wise and loving. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sending you big astro hugs and lots of love. And I hope that in your own way, you also celebrate this eclipse and celebrate healthy ego. Celebrate yourself. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.